Okay, so three by five card. Um, I'll have some in class tomorrow for you. And you can write whatever you want, just like usual. Uh, if you're just joining, I have one side is going to be my, I mean, you can do however you want, but like if I were to make it for myself, I made one side is going to be the, uh, the projectile motion stuff. Uh, and that's going to include the horizontal as well as the uh, stuff that is launched at an angle because it all goes together anyway. The only difference is that the stuff that's launched at an angle is not going to have the V, uh, VY naught is zero. So everything else still applies. Okay, it just does that little complication there. It's more like uh, horizontal projectile stuff, kind of get a, a shortcut deal to find time. But I'll get into that in a few minutes. What else? So then on the other side, I've got these fancy cards um, for some reason. And the other side, I just put some of the circular motion questions, or sorry, equations. Again, for me, I might also put some definitions on there, uh, just things that, Anything that's going to help you, like for example, as long as you know, like this is velocity, uh, central velocity, you're going to be fine. Circumference, you know, you might, you might want to just make a note of that. I don't know, uh, whatever you're comfortable with. Again, there's tons of practices, and the more practices you do, the more comfortable you're going to be with this stuff, of course. So, obviously, I don't need to tell myself that capital T is period but you might need to remind yourself what capital T is and you might need to remind yourself what period actually means in this case. It means it's the time it takes to go around the circle once in seconds. Uh, so that's up to you how you wanna do that. <clears throat> but once again, I will uh, talk about that later. I don't trust this, so I'm gonna to switch to, okay. I guess I should trust it. All right, if I don't see any comments, I will, I don't, I'm just using the uh, Twitch app, so I don't necessarily trust it. Um, so I just had the review printed out. Again, it's it's not gonna be everything. Well, it is gonna be touching on everything, but it's not gonna be like, uh, here's the test ahead of time. So you still have to be familiar with all the concepts and um, just comfortable using the kinematics equations in this context. So the big thing that you keep in mind that all this is based on is that the two different uh, two different dimensions are completely independent of each other, always. It doesn't matter if uh, something is thrown at an angle, it doesn't matter if it's rolled off the table, it doesn't matter if it's dropped. Uh, the velocity in the horizontal direction is not affected at all in any way by the velocity in the vertical direction. They are always, always independent of each other. So it doesn't matter how fast you throw something horizontally. It doesn't matter what angle you throw something horizontally um, or what angle you throw something at, the X is not gonna affect the Y. The only way that they come in, like, they indirectly affect each other in the amount of time that the projectile is in the air and that's it. And and that's it, that's, that's, that's why we always find time first. So, um, this answer that I have written here is not really a great justification. It's just more of a reiteration. So make sure you understand the velocity in the y direction and the velocity in the x direction are always, always, always independent of each other, no matter what. There's just no way that they could affect each other. Okay, so that said, uh, question two is pretty good because it really just walks you through the process and um, you know, drawing a diagram, finding the time, understanding the, the components uh, in the end, um, and how far it goes is pretty much the step process. So I'm not gonna do that. Uh, rather, I'm gonna do question number four. Let me just move my phone here. And so I make sure it's on the screen. So in this question, uh, we got Naraya. I don't know who that is. It's trying to jump off an elevated ramp and into a pool below. Uh, let me just check something. Okay. So I want to make sure I'm getting any comments that are coming through because I want to answer questions. So in this case, he's uh, if he's planning on running 30 meters per second, 
and he wants to land in the pool 27 meters away, how high does the platform he, he's running off of need to be in order for Narai to make it into the pool? Uh, draw the scenario and calculate your answer. So again, this is worked out on the um, in the answers and uh, what I want to show is just again how to do it because this is important and in this case the it, it's just a simple uh, well simple it's it's a typical horizontally launched projectile because anything that's in the air under the effect of just gravity is going to be a projectile and so it's going to follow that path it's going to start up high and it's going to end down below and so the, the things you really need to just understand is that the uh, it's going to have an initial velocity in the x direction but it's not going to have one in the y direction in fact on my card i kind of have that summarized here in that uh the well it's it's that that uh, oh here it is um if it's dropped or rolled off your initial velocity is going to be zero uh always so that's sort of the whole point is if it's rolling off or, or in this case running off a cliff um then he's not going up or down he's not like throwing himself up or down you're, you're just dropping it your your initial velocity in the y direction is going to be zero and so i'm going to keep these equations handy right here next to me because uh just to make sure i get this so i'm going to uh look at what i got and what i'm trying to find and uh typically like i said before and i've showed you this many times is i like to list out my x's and then all my y's so i'm going to do that oh of course it is and uh i started with my delta x i don't know how uh i want to know how far he wants to go in fact that's kind of my question mark how far nope that's not actually the question mark my mistake i know he's going to run and uh he wants to land in a pool 27 meters away so that's going to be my 27 meters. Uh, how high does the platform need to be? That's going to be um, my delta y. So my other x's is going to be my vx naught. What's my vx starting um, velocity? Well, he is moving at 30 meters per second. And how do I know that's not my v y naught? Well, because I just you just got to use your, uh, that's kind of why I drew the picture, to visualize it. He's running off the platform and he's moving at 30 meters per second, or he's going to move at 30 meters per second. And what direction is he moving? He's moving horizontally. He's moving in the X direction. My acceleration in the X direction is always going to be zero because once he gets into the air, there's nothing pushing him. There's nothing I'm slowing down. There's uh, we're ignoring your resistance. <clears throat> and so my acceleration in the X direction is always going to be zero. And just keep that in mind. That's just something to, uh, to always remember. And don't forget, by the way, if you got questions, please comment. Let me know. I won't know if you have questions, and so I'm just going to talk through this. Uh, and I'll try to throw in as much as I can to help you see what I'm doing. But if something's not clear, say something. All right. If you don't see something, say something. That's not how it goes. But so that's my X's, uh, and so I'm going to do the same three things for my Y's. So my delta Y is going to be my question mark. How high is he uh, going to be falling from? How high is the platform uh, is going to be my question mark. My initial velocity in the y direction, <clears throat> that's kind of one of those things where it's going to be always zero. Uh, not always, but in this case, because he's starting out moving only horizontally, he is not moving up or down yet until gravity starts to pull him down. But initially, it's zero. And my acceleration in the y direction, not the x direction, everything is y, is going to be my negative 9.8 meters per second squared. And that's the other thing. So if um, <clears throat> the acceleration in the x direction is always going to be negative, my acceleration in the y direction on Earth is always going to be negative 9.8 meters per second squared. And again, negative because it's moving downward. Um, so that's basically what I got to start with. And now comes the hard, not the hard part, but the part that I think a lot of, uh, people have trouble with is where do I go from here? I've got these variables and I've got these equations and what, what do I do? So 
these equations right here, these three, are the big ones. This one, I kind of mentioned in class, is it comes from this one. If you rearrange time and, and V0 is zero, then this is what you're going to get. Uh, so these three equations are the big ones. And I wrote everything in terms of x. If I were to do this again, I actually might not write the x's here and here and here and here. But I might because then I'm going to run into problems with it. The point is all these equations are in terms of x. And every place you see an x is just an indication that we're talking horizontal. Uh, everything's going in the horizontal direction. If these equations apply in the x direction and the y direction, though, so these equations, you can replace the x with y's, and it would work out perfectly. We've done it. You've done it. I've shown you in class. Um, but just you could almost ignore the little x's when you're doing this if at the point you're trying to figure out which equation to use. Okay, I said it before, my first day, the first day we talked about this, don't ever mix X's and Y's. And that's all those X's are there to remind you about, all right? That said, what do I do? Um, and the general tip, and it doesn't work every single time, but it's a good start. The general tip is if you're trying to find the Y, then use the information from the X's to find time. Okay, always find time. So, yeah, I'm a master at that uh, clicking of the pencil, breaking the pencil lid. So, find time is almost always going to be. Not, there's an actually not a situation I can think of where you wouldn't find time first. All right. So, I want to find time, and since I'm trying to, I don't have enough information from the y values from the y uh, pot here. I'm going to try to see what I have for uh, in the x's. Um, so which equation do I use? Well, I'm not going to use this last one because there's no time at all involved. Uh, I'm not going to use this one because when I multiply uh, ax times time, it's going to you know can't you're not going to have time in the end, and vx is going to be equal to vx naught. I mean that's sort of just a given if there's no acceleration anyway because they're going to be the same. So I'm going to end up using this equation here. Uh, so I'm going to write that out. So delta x is equal to vx naught times time plus one half axt squared. <clears throat> so I'm gonna get rid of my card for now. And actually I'm bringing my card back because why I'm doing that is because ax is always gonna be equal to zero and I have it over here too, the acceleration is gonna be zero. Then this is gonna be zero here. And that means everything multiplied by it will be zero. So all this just gets canceled out and becomes zero. So my equation now, simplified, becomes delta x equals vx naught times t. All right, I'm trying to find time. So I'm gonna rearrange that. I'm gonna divide both sides by vx naught and time will be equal to delta x divided by X naught. I'm trying to go too quickly here. Okay. So what that means, start to plug things in. I know delta X is 27 meters. I know VX naught is 30.0 meters per second. And so my time is 27 divided by 30.0 is 0 0.9. 0.9. The meters will cancel out, and the seconds is, well, it's a denominator under a denominator, so that's going to come up to the top. So he's going to be in the air for 0.9 seconds. So I just found time. And now what? Well, in the end, I need to find out the delta y. So I look at my equations again, and... This first, this one again, doesn't kind of count. It's, yeah, this first equation, this first main equation is already kind of set up for it. So again, kind of in your mind, replace X with Y. So delta Y is equal to V Y naught. We've got that at zero times time. We just got that one half A Y T. So we got both of those. So I can use this equation in terms of Y 
and it's going to tell me the height. So I'm going to do that. Uh, I'm going to write so delta y is equal to. Again, I'm just sort of transposing the y's in place of x's. So v y naught times time plus one half a y t squared. Okay, so I've used this equation, but instead of x's, I use y's. That's it, because the equations, yeah, I've kind of already explained that. So we're going to go from there and start plugging things in. Delta y is equal to vy naught, which is 0. So actually, that's going to become 0. Let's just 0, because vy naught is 0. OK. And so it's going to be 1 half a y t squared. All right, plug that in. And or plug in the numbers that goes with this. So ay is negative uh, 9.8 meters per second squared times the time squared, and the time is going to be 0.9 seconds squared. All right. And when these seconds get squared, they're going to cancel out with these squared seconds when you multiply it. So those could just cancel out right now. And you're going to get left with, well, let's see, 0.5 times negative 9.8 times 0.9 squared. So he fell negative 3.97, negative 3.97 meters negative. Um, so why is it negative? Because um, he fell down. That's, that's the reason it's downward, negative is downwards. So how high does the platform need to be up? It needs to be 3.97 meters high. Okay. So to recap on that really quick, list all my variables, all the x's, all the y's. Find time. And I find time by well, I, I look and see, I, I'm not going to have enough information from the y's, so I use what, I'm going to use the x's. And so I just pick one of the equations that will help me find time using, in this case, x's. I find the time, and then I plug into the appropriate equation to, uh, to find what I need using the, the time I just found out. So point is, he's falling. He's going from side to side, and we know that, um, yeah, I mean, that's all there is, I guess. So you just find the time. <laughs> Not much I could say about that. Okay, so there's that one. Let's go on to the next page. All right, not seeing any questions yet, so I'm just going to keep going. So that was standard one. That was the horizontal um, projectile, projectile motion. That was when vy naught is equal to zero. Again, it is not a lot that's different. It's just that you're able to use uh, this one equation in that, in that situation. You notice I didn't even use it in that situation because um, we weren't dealing with the y's. We didn't use y to find time. But sometimes you might. Sometimes, don't forget, you're going to see time given to you. It's going to say, and so-and-so spent so much time in the air, how far did he go? Well, that's going to be easy. Just to have the problems done for you. So don't overthink it. Okay, find time. If time is already found for you, go on from there. All right. Um, I'm going to let you just look five up on the key. There's not really much I can explain there uh, that I want to explain and get into there. The uh, question about the football problem. Um, vertical and velocity and horizontal. That goes back to kind of day one when we talked about this stuff. Uh, keeping in mind that the horizontal velocity is going to be always the same for every single place in the in the path. The vertical velocity is going to be changing though. So again, look at the key. You can see uh, how that changes. But the vertical velocity is going to change and the horizontal velocity will not. Um, <clears throat> let's see. So that brings me to number seven. I think I want to do this one. Let's get that lined up. So we've got our golfer. Hits a ball, angle of 48 degrees, velocity of 13 meters per second. All right. This one, uh, 
it kind of breaks it down for you as well, which is kind of nice because once again, trying to find time first. Uh, but once again, I'm gonna list out my variables. So we'll start out with delta x. So we don't know. I'm just gonna leave that blank. V x naught equals, well, that's not given, is it? Um, what did I do? Well, what did I do the first time that I didn't do this time? Draw a picture. So I'm gonna draw it up here since I neglected to draw it down there, right next to the football player. Basically, uh, he hits at an angle of 48 degrees. So we'll just call it that. And that is gonna be my V naught. That's gonna be the 13 meters per second. Angle of 48 degrees. Whenever you see that, it means from the ground, unless it specifies something else, all right? So that means that if this is the ground, then the angle right there is 48 degrees, all right? And that's your theta. So I'm gonna take that and I'm gonna go, I'm gonna go with that. Uh, we've done this a million times now where we are going to make this into a triangle. So I'm just going to right on top of that, make this a triangle. And it doesn't need to be perfect because this is to help us visualize, but we've got our VY naught. No, we got our V naught. And what we have to do is find our VY naught and our VX naught. So initial velocity in the Y direction, initial velocity in the X direction. And that's gonna be, um, help us, that's gonna help us to figure this out. So if we now have our right triangle, so here's our 90 degree angle, <clears throat> we've got our angle here, which means that I neglected to get my pen. So that's not gonna be super duper helpful. Well, maybe this will do it. Maybe not though. This will be my, <laughs> there we go, uh, Jason side. That's the worst pen ever. And this will be my opposite side. This will be my hypotenuse, okay? So once again, the uh, adjacent to the angle, opposite to the angle, opposite side from the angle and the hypotenuse, okay? So that's gonna help us to figure out which equation to use. Now again, you might wanna have on here, on your, uh, no card, you can have the Sokatoa. And remember, so is the sine of the angle is opposite over hypotenuse. So to, I guess, rearrange that, because we use this pretty often, the uh, opposite side, I guess I could write op, is gonna be equal to H times, again, Sokatoa. So this is sine of the angle and the adjacent side will be equal to h times the cosine of the angle, okay? We're gonna use that a lot. I mean, you have been using that a lot, I hope. Uh, so, but just so you don't have to rethink it every time, um, that, that, is, that is definitely a place where you might make a, um, a dumb mistake. I know I've done it many times and I had to tell myself every time, okay, so kato, uh, and I had to rethink it. So again, just double check it, have it written down if you want. So the uh, opposite side here is, uh, or I should say the V X naught is my adjacent side, according to my triangle here. It's a good thing I wrote it down and I could visualize it, write these things down, draw your triangles, draw it all out. And uh, so my V Y V X naught is my adjacent side. And I just got done writing down on my card that adjacent side is h times the cosine of theta. And that means that that is gonna be, h is 13, 13 meters per second times cosine of the angle, which is 48 degrees, which is, so 13 times Cosine of 48, give me 8.698. So let's just go 8.7 meters per second. 
So that's how fast the golf ball is going in the X direction if you hit it with uh, at 13 meters per second at an angle of 48 degrees. Um, where were we? Oh, yes. So AX is going to be zero because always in these ca cases, when we're ignoring air resistance, there's nothing speeding it up. There's nothing slowing it down once it's in the air. Um, and let's see if we can squeeze this in here. All right, we'll try it. I'm running out of room. Oh, well. So delta Y, how high? Oh, uh, well, we don't know. I'm just going to leave that. Um, yeah, the chat's dead. That's OK. Uh, question on the quiz tomorrow. Let me answer that in a minute. I'll get to that. Let me finish this problem up. That's a good question, though. Uh, where were we? Anyway, delta Y, we don't know that yet. Uh, we're going to end up finding it out for letter B, but we'll get there. Um, and so I'm just going to do, I guess I'll just keep going because uh, apparently these are going to overlap. Scooch that up. So V Y naught is going to be the other one. Uh, that's going to be the opposite side of my triangle. So that's going to be my so. So that's going to be H times sine of theta. And I'll get to the... Um, circular motion stuff in a few minutes. So uh, I've only been, it's been a half hour, so uh, we should be good. So 13 meters per second times the sine of 48 degrees. And I wrote 48 twice for some reason. 48 degrees is equal to, and I just go seconds earlier and sine 9.66. 9.66 meters per second is going to be uh, <clears throat> how fast it's going in the y direction. Finally, a y is going to be, I knew that was going to happen, it's going to be equal to negative 9.8 meters per second squared. Okay, that's just always uh, for this. All right, back to question A, how long is the ball in the air before it hits the ground? Okay, well, what do we got here? Mm, we don't have a lot. We don't have a lot before it hits the ground. Okay, so this goes back to my little handy dandy little cheat sheet here. And one thing I like to keep in mind, I do this on the board, we talked about this, is when you got a situation like this where it goes up and goes down and lands in the same spot, uh, a couple of things are gonna be true. Uh, first of all, the halfway point, that's gonna be equal to half the time. Also, your VY at that point will be equal to zero. Let's just uh, fix the focus here maybe. So your VY is going to be equal to zero at that point. Ain't happening. And in the end, your V actually made it much worse. No, it's better. Uh, your VY naught will be, I'm, your, your VY naught is going to be, how fast it went up at the beginning is how fast it's going to be coming down at the end. Okay, all things, you know, no, no air resistance and all things considered equal. So I'm going to use that. What I mean by that is we want to know how long the ball is in the air before it hits the ground. That means it went all the way up and came all the way back down, all right? So I'm just going to say that Vy at the very end is going to be equal to however fast it was going up at the beginning. It's going to now be going in the opposite direction. It's going to be coming downward at the same speed that it was going at the beginning, all right? So what that means is Vy is equal to 9.66 meters per second. All right, so I'm gonna put a little star by this because this was just a piece of information to know. Uh, you have to know that that's gonna be the case in this type of situation. All right, now how does that help me? Well, I now have VY and I have VY naught. I'm trying to find how long the golf ball was in the air. And so I look at my equations and I think hopefully this one um, it definitely can't be that one. Let's see, I know Vy, I know Vy naught, I know the, okay, it's gonna be this equation right here. So, bloop, bloop, bloop. so V, again, I have X's written, but it applies for Y's as well, equals Vy naught plus AYT. Now, how did I pick that equation? It just seemed to be the, uh, this one right here, we don't know time, and I really don't feel like dealing with um, the square roots. Although it would, 
it would probably work. I and mean, the problem is we don't know how far it went. That's actually the main issue. We don't know how far it went. Uh, this one, well, there's no time at all involved, so that's not going to work at all. So this is the only one that really works. So again, you got to think about which equation do I use, which one has what I want to find, and which one doesn't require information that I don't have. And if it doesn't have that information, can I find it? <clears throat> so I've got this equation. I'm going to solve it for time. Uh, I'm going to subtract vy naught from both sides. So vy minus vy naught is equal to a y t. And then I'm going to solve it for t again. I'm going to divide both sides by a y. Um, so v is equal to, or t is equal to v y minus v y naught divided by a y. If I find that, I will find my time. So let me do that. Let me do it correctly. Time is equal to vy minus vy naught. So vy is negative 9.6. I guess I should have get that negative in there. Uh, negative 9.66 meters per second minus 9.66 meters per second. All that over negative 9.8 meters per second squared. All right, so if I do that, negative 9.66 minus 9.66, I get, I'll just write this out, times equal to negative 19.32 meters per second over negative 9.8 meters per second squared. Negatives are gonna cancel out nicely, and 9.8, divide that by 9.8. So the time, uh, I'm running out of room, that's all right is 1.97 seconds for question number 7a. And I went off the page there, off the screen, I mean. Sorry about that, just barely though. Okay, so look at the start area. That was my, um, that was where I had to think it through a little bit is just to know that when it comes down, it's gonna be going the exact same speed, but in the opposite direction. Then I had to, once I got my time, pick out the formula, the, the equation that I'm going to use, which one has the information I need, the T, which one requires the information that I have, and then I could solve from there. Okay. Uh, what was the greatest height the ball achieves? <clears throat> um, well, let's kind of do one of these. And... So the greatest height I'm trying to find is trying to find delta y uh, at the greatest height. And remember what I said earlier, uh, if you look at your note card, my note card, and the thing we talked about the other day is the greatest height, it's going to take, in a, in a perfect arc like this with you know nothing getting in the way, it's going to take half the time to get to that height. So all I got to do is take, well, time is going to be half the original time. So I'm going to take the time I just got, divide that by 2. And I'm going to say, all right, what's the height at 0.985 seconds? 0 0.986 seconds, I'll just say. That's my time. And I want to know what delta y is going to be. So I look at my equation. This equation is set up nicely for that, maybe, hopefully. So delta y is equal to vy naught. I have that times time. Got that plus a. OK, I got all these things. So I'm going to use this equation. So delta y is equal to v y naught times time plus one half a y t squared. Short answer to your question: I don't recall how many questions are on the quiz tomorrow, but it's going to be relatively short. In case you're uh, trying to get out of here, so sorry about sorry to make you wait. Um, so v y is going to be equal to v y naught times time. So v y naught was is 9.6 meters per second. Multiply that by time, 0 0.986 seconds, plus 1 half times negative 9.8 meters per second squared times the time, which is 0.986 seconds squared. So that is a big number, or it's a lot of computation, I guess I should say. 9.66 times uh, 
0.986 plus 0.5 times negative 9.8. I'm going to put all that in parentheses, even though the calculator should do order operations correctly. I don't trust it. Times 0.986 squared. So I got the maximum height is 4. Point, what is it called? 4.8 meters high because squared seconds will cancel out with these squared seconds and these seconds will cancel out with these seconds. So this thing got 4.8 meters high. Okay, so once again, just keep in mind that this right here is your, I don't know if your, your logical step where you have to realize that it's going to be half the time. All right. And then you just go from there with the equations. How far does the golf ball travel? Okay, well, now we're talking about the range. And this is going to be the entire, um, the entire time from beginning to end. So my time is going to be back to the full 1.97 seconds. Um, and in this case, uh, I mean, I'll just write time equals 1.97 seconds. Just to remind myself, I think I'm going to use the same equation. So there's no reason not to, except, you know, I'm going to use the x's, uh, vx naught times time plus one half ax times time squared. Yeah, I mean this is going to work out, and all that is going to become zero because ay is or ax is neck is zero. So how far does it go? Is just going to be my initial x velocity times the time. I'm good at that. So vx naught is 8.7 meters per second, and I got that at the very beginning when I found the um, <clears throat> the adjacent side of the triangle. Times 1.97 seconds. And so 8.7 times 1.97, it goes 17.14 meters. All right, so that's that's that. Moving along. Where are we at? Okay. So this question is pretty good because it's the same idea. Again, you know, I'll just start with the triangle. He throws it up at uh, 5.5 meters per second. Okay, angle of 45 degrees. So it's gonna be my VX naught, my VY naught. Uh, the angle's gonna be 45 degrees. So Again, it's just sort of the same thing. I'll go through this a little bit quicker. So delta x, how far along does it go? I don't know. Uh, my initial, um, not my naught, my vy, vx naught is going to be, uh, all right, I'll just h times, so that's adjacent and opposite. So that's going to be cosine of the angle uh, which will be, again, I'm just doing the same thing as I did last time. So 5.5, I'm resolving the, the initial velocity vector and into its x and y components. So cosine of uh, 45. So vx naught, mm, indecisive, 5.5 times cosine of 45, <clears throat> 3.89. Meters per second. My a x is zero, like usual. My delta y, how high up was the seagull? Oh, that's what I'm trying to find. And v y naught, v y naught is going to be h times the sine of the angle which, and I'll let you uh, figure this out why it is for yourself, is also going to be 3.89. 
you can do the calculations and figure it out and make sure you that is true, but I'm not even, I know it's true. Okay, there's a reason I know it's true. Um, but you should do it for yourself if you're not sure. And my AY is gonna be negative 9.8 meters per second squared, just like usual. So how high up was it? Okay, going back to my little equations here. Will this one work? Well, let's find out. Can I find time? Probably. Um, yeah, maybe. This one, Vx a times t, okay, don't know it. Um, so, um, this one's an interesting one. So, Vx and a, that's gonna be zero. So, x, let's see, I said, we gotta use x's, so, hmm, that's uh, Vx, got that. We don't have the time. Wait a minute, there was one little thing, remember? Okay. See, you might think you're stuck and you might start to panic and then you gotta go, wait, no, hang on, hang on, hang on. There's something that there's, there's something gotta be there. So what is the trick to this question? The seagull is right at the top, right? So what did I tell you about that? It's at the very top, the VY is gonna be equal to zero and the time is gonna be equal to half, right? So we know that VY naught is equal to zero, all right? And so what that means, is, I'm sorry, not Vy is, yeah, it's equal to zero. So I'm just gonna add that in there. Um, yeah, Vy not, Vy, but not not, is equal to zero, all right? I'm gonna put a little star, a little asterisk by that. That's the one where it's at the top of the rise. And so <clears throat> what that means, do, 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 do is we can use the second equation, all right? So I'm gonna put Vy is equal to Vy naught plus Ayt, okay? What are we trying to find? How high up it was? Well, we gotta find time first, all right? Always find the time. Speaking of which, all right, quarter till. And so I'm gonna rearrange this to solve for time. We've done this a million times already. Time is gonna be equal to Vy minus Vy naught divided by Ay. And so that's gonna be equal to, uh, what's Vy? Uh, th negative 3.89 meters per second. That's not gonna work. Uh, minus 3.89 meters per second over negative 9.8 meters per second squared. And I'm just gonna <clears throat> do the calculation all on my calculator. 39 minus 3.89 divided by 9.8. So the time in the air at this point, halfway through is gonna be 0.79 seconds, we'll call it, okay? Uh, so, now all I gotta do is find the height. So I'm looking at my index card and my height is gonna be delta y is equal to v y naught times time plus one half a y t squared. All right, so plug in the, <laughs> we'll plug in all the numbers again and solve it. So delta y, again, this is now, the, the hard part's done. Now I just plug and chug a little bit um, because I found the time. Now it's just I gotta plug in all these numbers. All right. So Vy naught is 3.89 meters per second times the time we just found 0 0.79 seconds plus one half times negative 9.8 meters per second squared times time squared, 0 0.79 seconds. And once again, I'm just gonna put this on the calculator and be done with it. 3.89 times 0.79 plus 0.5 times negative 9.8, I forgot the squared, squared that. 
times 0.97 squared. Mm, something's not right. 3.89 point, I didn't put something in the calculator right. Um, 0.5 times negative 9.8 times. Hmm. Seconds. I wasn't in the air very long, but that doesn't make much sense. Let me try that again. I am um, rushing this now. 3.89 times 0.79 seconds. And that'll cancel out. And okay, good. And that plus a 0.5 times negative 9.8 meters per second squared times 0.97 squared. Well, I feel like I may have messed up somewhere along the lines, but the um, the uh, the thought process is there anyway. Um, I d don't want to double check my math at this point because we're getting long. Uh, but one thing I can do is. Do, 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 do. Now let's check something really quick. Yeah, so anyway, the uh, thought process is basically, this. It's, it is the same. Uh, I'm just curious why I am uh, not getting the correct answer. At least it feels like a very wrong answer. So, no, it is the right answer. It's very short. All right. So the answer I should get is 0.77 meters. All right, so I still feel like I might have done something un, unproper there, but is VY zero or negative? Let me check. Do, 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 do. VY naught should be that. AY um, is VY naught is negative that. Um, it's definitely negative negative. I believe the time is correct. Yeah, you might be uh, you might be right there. Let's see. So um, I got the time. Oh, that's interesting. I didn't even figure out the time of this one. Hmm. That's the kind of cool thing about this one is I'm gonna do this in a slightly different way really quick. Um, so V Y not? Oh yes, you are correct. That was my problem. I that's why I'm getting. I'm all right. That makes a lot of sense. So chat did something, pointed out a problem. I made a question. I made this V Y is uh, going to be zero, not negative. I'm confusing my problems here. So this whole thing is going to be different. So. I was getting like a near zero answer, which would make sense uh, if I was calculating out like how fast things were going at the very end. So this is going to be zero meters per second. Thank you. That was like literally the entire thing I was just getting at. So that's the point. The time is going to be zero at the top. Okay. So that's going to change the time. It's going to be roughly half of what I had before. So three point. 9 divided by 9.8 yeah so the actual time it takes to get to the top where the seagull is at is let's just call it 4.0 seconds or 0.4 seconds and now my uh, paper is getting nice and sloppy so point there's no period there let's call it 0.4 seconds let's get rid of all that okay thank you that would do it. So then my time here needs to change to half that and half that. And now I'll get the correct answer, which I believe I've already written down. 0.4 seconds, 0.4 seconds. All right, so I saw on the screen. All right, 3.89 times 0.4 plus 1 half times negative 9.8 
times 0.4 squared. All right, that definitely is the answer, 0 0.77 meters high. Cool. All right. So be careful. Things happen. You show all your work on the test, for example, and I see you made that mistake. It happens. All right. Try not to do that, obviously. Double check your work. If you're getting weird answers, then you got to take a second and go back and see where you made your mistake. Sort of like I was trying to do there, and I, um, yeah, I didn't find it until you pointed it out. All right, where should Xander be uh, if he if there wasn't a bird in the way? So in other words, where should he be if like it it finishes the entire um, like up and down path? All right. In other words, what is our dx? What is our delta x? Okay. So in this case, we uh, we've already kind of figured out the whole time in the air. We could go that way. Um, and so look at our equations let's double check does this work uh the, now on the equation or on the key there's there's a, actually a different way to do this you can use this this equation right here and um you could actually figure it out from there but um let's uh for for the for for part a you could have figured that out um but let's figure this out here we got uh we got our total time in the air is gonna be double our time from before and so I'll do that really quick. So delta x is going to be equal to vx naught times time plus one half a x t squared. Once again, that's going to be zero because a x is zero. And literally, this question is going to be a piece of cake. So vx naught was. 3.89 meters per second times the time. Now this is the full time. So um, all the way up, all the way down. So in this case, time is going to be <laughs> the thing we had earlier. Earlier, uh, I guess it was a point close to 0.8. Uh, let's just call it 0.8 because it's going to be double the time, 0 0.8 seconds and uh, 0.8 seconds. I don't even need to square it. It's just gonna be 3.89 times 0.8. So I got 3.1 meters away. All right. So, yeah. The second part was a lot easier than the first part, at least for me. Like you make it, you make the one little mistake and you know, again, you're doing the process correctly. And then you get to the end, you just get a weird answer. It just, something doesn't sound right to you. Go with it, go, go with that. Like go back and check, something was wrong. You know, you could tell I knew something was wrong. And if I, I, th I thought I made a mistake here, um, but it ended up being back here and you caught it, so thank you. All right, so that is that. Now, circular motion. I will tell you, this is get practice on this um this is where you're going to have uh, have have questions uh tomorrow i uh on your quiz it's a it's a very straightforward quiz there's not gonna be any types of questions like what we were just doing um it's gonna be again look at look at these questions on the review all right draw a draw a circle and label it like a clock okay look on the key the point is um force always has to push in a circle if something's moving in a circle in a curve something has to be pushing it in that direction or pulling in that direction so all your force vectors will be going in toward the center of the circle uh, i mean if you think about it when you have a when you're doing a question like these you got gravity pulling it downward all the time what direction does gravity pull down 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 it's always toward like the the, the inner part of the loop uh, or the arc and so that's what's going on with circular motion uh, we're looking more at distinct circles though rather than like arcs so it's a little bit different but i mean check out the key um tangential velocity i mean don't forget tangent is literally just if something's moving around in a circle okay like clockwise pick a spot draw a tangent from that in the direction of the circle so like literally what would happen if you were to like escape the circle you would fly off you know tangent to the circle a tangent is just a line that's touching one point of the circle so that's it, all right? I'll let you fill in the rest of those three o'clock, six o'clock, nine o'clock positions and all that. 
centripetal force, I just got done saying, is um, it's the force that's pushing in the, into the inside. It's always pushing toward the inside. Uh, why does an object do oh. Again, I'm just going to let you look those up. Those are pretty uh, straightforward. I'm going to spill my water all over the place. But let me know, chat. If you got chat, chat, let me know in chat or in a mind if you got a question. All right. I know I'm breezing through that, but to me, those are sort of definitional type things. Uh, centrifugal force, it's not really real, although I've heard arguments it is, but for our purposes, it's not real. Um, centrifugal force is that feeling that, like when you're in a car, when you get felt, when you felt like you're being flung to the outside, there's, you're not being flung to the outside. Remember, it's, it's, it's an imaginary force. The real force is the stuff that's pushing you in toward the center. So uh, that fake force feeling has a name called centrifugal force. Uh, if two kids are in a merry-go-round, who has a greater linear speed? Okay, I drew this on the board. Uh, the kid on the outer part is going to have the greater linear speed uh, because, again, and this is like almost exactly what I drew on the board the other day, if you're in the center, if you've got the center of the circle, the linear speed, if you're moving around the circle counterclockwise like that, and you're farther out moving counterclockwise like that, okay, you're stuck together on the merry-go-round. The merry-go-round spins, and everybody's stuck together. Like the kid here and the kid here, you're both, you're not, you're staying together, you know, you're both traveling the same distance around the circle. So you have the same RPMs, rotations per minute. But imagine, you know, you stretch out the kid's path into a straight line and on the inside compared to the kid on the outside, if they're both going for the same amount of time, the kid on the outside has to go a greater distance. So he has a greater, what we call linear speed, if you were to uh, uncurvify this pathway that he took. All right. Um, okay, now seeing any questions on chat. For these, listen, these equations, familiarize yourself with the variables. There's not a lot of uh, cognitive, like there's nothing much I could teach you how to think about this. You just have to Make sure you understand, like, the circular velocity of a planet. Well, you're going to be trying to find VC, if circular velocity, the centripetal velocity. What do you have? You've got um, you got the mass. Okay, that doesn't matter in this case, right? Uh, the start at distance of 8.9 times. So, so dealing with these things, maybe, I can't say it's going to be on the... If you got trouble with that kind of stuff, let me know. Um the year on that planet is 48 days. Determine the following. So one thing I will point out is if you see something in terms of days, we don't deal with days in physics. That's, we got, you know, we deal in seconds. Everything's in seconds. So if you got 84 days, okay, um, you got to think, how am I going to convert that to seconds? Well, I know that there is um, one day is 24 hours, all right? So days will cancel out. I know that one hour is 60 minutes. Hours will cancel out. And I know that one minute is 60 seconds. Okay, that's, that'll cancel out. I did that all upside down. You know what? I'm not even going to try to fix that. That is a complete blunder. It's the same idea, but I had it all upside down. So, and you would have known because you would have gotten a really tiny number. Um, there's 24 hours in one day and there is 60 minutes in one hour and there is 60, um, doo -doo 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 -doo, seconds in one minute. Okay. Days cancels out, hours cancels out, minutes cancels out. So you take 84 times 24 times 60 times 60, and you're going to get a whole bunch of seconds. So that's going to be your time, the period. And you, uh, yeah, you're just going to have to divide. So the centripetal acceleration, again, 
you know, you're gonna you end up just solve for velocity. So you can plug that, you can square it in, you just divide it by the radius. Okay, and you get that because it tells you this is this is a this is more of an advanced question. I mean, I would definitely if this is like throwing you off, go do some of the like the um, the the reviews or the the practices first. It doesn't have like crazy examples using scientific notation and stars and planets and stuff like that. Okay, um, the point is you're gonna get uh, the the period, the time it takes to go around once. You're gonna get the velocity. You're gonna find you. You're gonna get all this information. You just have to decide. Um, it's gonna be very straightforward. Uh, what is the centripetal force? Well, you know you're just going to multiply that mass, the 3.5 times 10 to the 13th kilograms, times whatever the acceleration is that you just found. Okay. Um, how long does it take you to run one complete circle? That's that's period. That's that's capital T. So you will have to rearrange something to find that, but the uh, the questions are just given. And I'm not like... Uh, blowing this off like it's like oh you should get this you know that's that's not what I'm trying to say what I'm trying to say is that uh, there's not much for me to explain I, um, I will work one out okay it's going a little past time I will work one out um, I'll work out the number 15 but um, but really do the practice and uh, you should be able to, and, and and you'll see it's it's once you get used to dealing with these variables it's not too tough i hope at least compared to the other stuff we've been doing so kaylee running in a circle with a centripetal acceleration of 0.66 meters per second squared and a radius of make sure this is on the screen and it's not and a radius of 0.85 meters how long does it take her to casually how long does it take her to run one complete circle so you give in acceleration uh, 6.6 .6 meters per second squared and a radius of 0.85 meters. And we want to know how long does it take her to run one complete circle? What's the period? So I have AC and I have uh, the radius and I want to know period. Well, it looks like um, that these are you know something's going on here. What, what, what's going to what's going to happen here? So this equation AC is equal to VC squared over R. Well, I've got R. That's kind of nice, but I don't have um, you know I don't have uh, I don't have VC. What about this one over here? Wait, wait. This looks good. Four times. Oh, okay. So I'll tell you what. We want to find uh, this one too. Well, let's use this one. We don't we don't have circumference. I do have radius though. So I'm gonna go like this. AC is equal to four pi r four pi squared r divided by t squared. All right. And so all I did is I took AC. It's equal to that. that equal to that, and it's equal to that. So I just said to go to that. So now I need to solve for time or the period the time. Uh, so I'm going to just go, all right, well, I need to get time by itself. So that's going to be T squared times AC is equal to four pi squared R. I need to get time by itself, period by itself. So I'm going to divide both sides by AC, get that out of there, four pi squared r divided by ac and i don't want the square of that so i need to square root it so i'm going to square root that and whatever i do to one side i gotta do to the other so the period is equal to the square root of four pi squared r divided by ac so this is kind of getting to be kind of cumbersome but none we can't handle um so i'm bleeding into the next question here but that's okay uh, i'm going to take the square root of four times pi squared times the radius which is 0.85 meters 0.85 meters divided by my centripetal acceleration and she's got 6.6 .6 meters per second squared all right this is a hot mess but let's try this out uh, what's going to end up happening is this meters will cancel out with those meters and we're going to get the square root of some crazy number, and it's going to be 4. 
So I need to complete everything inside the, uh, the mm, square root before I take the square root. And I could do it all in my calculator all at once, but I'm not going to. So four times pi, and I have a pi button. There it is. I'm not, totally not doing this on the screen. So four times pi squared times 0.85 meters divided by 6.6. .6. So it's going to be the square root of 5.08 seconds squared. And if I take the square root of my answer, then it turns out she ran, or the period of time it took her to do that was uh, 2.3 seconds. All right, so again, a little trickier, but these are, this is off the review, and it's assuming that you've tried some of the, uh, the practices where the questions aren't so, um, I don't know, muddy, I guess. Um, last call for questions. I haven't seen any. Hopefully that's helpful. Um, if you do have any, you could always ask me tomorrow in class after the quiz, I'll just put that right there. And um, all right, well, thanks for joining. Uh, hopefully that was helpful to you. And if it wasn't, well, you'll let me know. Um, great, and see you tomorrow.